she said to meet her on the roof of Radakan. When I get there, I find it cordoned off. The roof... The roof was off limits to begin with, but now it's also part of a crime scene. As if I need another reminder of the murder that took place here three weeks ago. I duck under the yellow tape and open the door. The lock is still broken. I can hardly breathe after running up the stairs to get here. As I gasp for air, I look across the stark white concrete. And naturally, my eyes go straight to the satellite sitting smack dab in the middle of the roof. No way. It's a robot, right? The transforming kind? Mayuri and Daru are just as surprised. What is that thing? I mean, it looks like Suzuwa's time machine. But there's something different about it. Yeah, and it's not broken. Suzuwa's looked old and beat up. This one looks brand new. It's not stuck in the wall, either. And besides... This is the beta world line where CERN's dystopia never forms. Suzuwa has no reason to travel to 2010. The satellite shouldn't be here. And yet, I feel like I've seen it before. Where? When did I? Of course. It was at Dr. Nakabachi's presentation. Right before the presentation started, something shook the building like an earthquake. When I went to check the roof, this, this satellite was sitting there. Though still confused, I approached the satellite. Just then, the hatch opens and someone steps outside. <laughs> well, shit, you look different, don't you, Amame? Okabe Rintaro? Suzuha! really is her. The part-time warrior, John Titer. Time traveler from 2036. Daru's daughter, who will be born seven years from now. Why are you here? I ask her the same question over the phone, but I can't help myself. I need answers. Are you Okabe Rintaro? I need to know. Yeah. The way she puts it makes it sound like she's never met me before. And now that we're talking face to face, I realize there's something very different about her. For starters, what's with all the camo? It looks dirty and worn, like she's been fighting in it for a while. She's even carrying a gun for some reason, and I'm pretty sure it's not a replica. Is she really a Mame Suzuwa? Yeah, mate. Hold on. Just hold on a second. This doesn't make sense. No. Calm down. Figure this out, Okabe. You know that this is impossible. Suzuwa can't be here. She leapt to 1975 in a one-way time machine. She found the IBM 5100, made sure it would get to you, and then passed away in the year 2000. So, where did this girl come from? I'm a time traveler from the year 2036. I have a request for Uncle Okarin. D uncle? You're an uncle? We don't have time to humor Mayori's question. Tezuo walks up to me and looks me in the eye. Her expression is grim. The next words out of her mouth are the last thing I expected to hear. This world line is headed for World War 3! Yeah, it checks out! I need your help to prevent it! Please! Help me change the future! What the... What the hell are you talking about?! World War 3?! Oh, no. That's real bad. Uh, are you really a time traveler? You're not just messing with us here? Stay out of this, Dad! D Dad? 
That was a shock. I mean, it's not every day a mysterious beauty calls me dad. Though, to be honest, I prefer to be called Big Brother. Wait. Everyone, just wait. Let me think. I take a deep breath. Okay. Let's figure this out. I turn to Suzuwa. Is that thing a time machine? Suzuwa nods curtly. He hasn't smiled once. There's no hint of the cheerful Suzuwa I remember. Instead, I sense strength, conviction, and steel resolve. Your father built it. That's right. Suzuwa glances at Daru. Where did you come from? The year 2036! I stopped in 1975 and 2000 first. You... What? That doesn't make any sense. She's obviously not in her 40s. Which means... That time machine can take travel to the future? It wouldn't be much of a time machine otherwise. This isn't the Suzuwa I know. But it is Suzuwa. You're... You're from a different future. A different future? What's going on in 2036? What about CERN's dystopia? CERN? What's that? Suzuwa frowns. She doesn't know about CERN. That settles it. She's definitely not the Suzuwa I know. She said something about World War Three. Right. In my time, humanity has been reduced to less than a billion people. Less than a billion? But the population now is like 6.7 billion. Are you saying 5.7 people have died? 5.7 people. 5.7 billion people have died? That's what happens when you use nuclear weapons. It was just like the Cold War. Only this time, they were fighting over time travel technology. It started with a race between the EU and Russia. And the Americans got involved, and things really went to hell. They were all desperate to stop anyone else from being the first to build a time machine. Whoever controls time controls the world, right? Time travel again. It has the power to grant your dreams, and at the same time, destroy everything you love. I know that better than anyone. By 2036, the war is over, but it left the Earth in ruins. We won't survive for long. Not as things are. It's unbelievable. In the future of the Alpha World Line, CERN used their time machine to fashion a dystopia where no one could oppose their rule. Zua traveled to the past to change that. She showed me how to escape that convergence. The result is this, the Beta World Line. Here, CERN fails to complete its time machine. But instead, 5.7 billion people die in the fires of nuclear war. <laughs> this can't be happening. My legs fold beneath me. I sink to my knees. Are you okay? Mayori knees beside me and gently rubs my back. But I'm too stunned to respond to her kindness. I glare at Suzuwa. Though I know it's absurd, part of me blames her. Why is this happening? You lied to me! You said a f peaceful future was waiting for us on the Beta World Line! We saved Mayori. We changed the future! And now, after everything we did, Suzuwa appeared before me once again to tell me that it wasn't enough. We're at a point of great divergence when... I KNOW THAT ALREADY! And you understand! 5.7 billion people are going to die, and the survivors will be left with no future! 
No hope! I came here to help to prevent that! And to do that, I need your help, Uncle Loka! I refuse! I reject her plea outright. Suzua looks hurt, betrayed like an abandoned puppy. How dare she look at me that way? I borrow Mayuri's shoulder and struggle back to my feet. I came here from the Alpha World line. I had to sacrifice the girl I love to make it this far. I can't go back. Not to the world line where Mayuri dies. I don't care if 5.7 people. I keep saying 5.7 people. I don't care if 5.7 billion people die. I won't let her. I WON'T LET KURASU'S SACRIFICE BE IN VAIN! One person versus 5.7 billion. They can't be compared. Suzuru is staring at me in disbelief. Mayuri and Daru clearly don't know what to say. I haven't told them what happened, so they can't understand. Wait! You mean you've been to the other attractive field? Wow! So that's the power of reading Steiner. How do you know about that? Dad told me. And I mentioned before on Coral Karim. In the future, that is. You've... met me? I see. So the me of that tract bill went to the past too. Faint smile flickers across her face, and she looks at me with renewed in intensity. Uncle Okarin, I know you don't want to, but... No. I won't let Kurosu's death be in vain, and I won't let Mayori die! Mayushi dies? By Kurasu, I assume you mean Makase Kurasu. Listen, Uncle. Let's say, hypothetically, the only way to change the future is on this world line is to go to July 28th, 2010, the day Makase Kurasu dies. And save her. What would you do? What? Shock ripples through my body. What did she say? Save... Kurasu? But how? We no longer have the phone wave or the time leap machine. And even if I did, I could never leap that far back. <gasps> <sighs> of course. I look over at Suzuo's shoulder, at the object disguised as a satellite. Time machine. Your time machine. Cool. We can use your time machine! Came all the way from 2036. You should have no trouble going back a mere three weeks. Even better, this time machine can do what Alpha, Alpha Suzuas could not. It can travel to the future. I can go to July 28th, save Kurasu, and return to the present. No demails. No time leaps. Genuine physical time travel. I can't refuse. I literally can't refuse. I saw this time machine once before, on July 28th, that fateful day. Shortly before Kurusu was killed, I saw it standing in this very spot, as sure is standing before me now. There's only one thing that can mean. It's already been established that this time machine will appear on that day, in that place. Even before I sent the first email, my participation was assured. Even the thought of turning Suzuo down now is meaningless. Nothing's coincidence. Everything is inevitable. The revelation makes me dizzy. It's like I don't have the tiniest atom of free will. Like my every action from the moment of my birth was planned by, for me by some cosmic force. The world line I'm aiming for isn't... What did you call it? The Alpha World Line? It's not that. What we're aiming for is the space between attractor fields. The space between? 
That lies a world line unaffected by any attractor field. A world line known as Stein's Gate. What? But that's the Chuni name I pulled out of my ass. It doesn't mean anything. I was told that Stein's Gate is a brand new world line no one has ever observed. But didn't someone have to observe it to know it's there? Nope! It's never been observed. That's what makes it new. But uh, Dad and Uncle Okrim were able to calculate its divergence. Matters 0.081609% relative to the current world line. That's where we'll find Stan's gate. And to reach that world line, we have to save Kurosu? Just, I've just realized how fun it is to say Steins Gate in a, in a really bad American accent. Exactly. She's the key to averting World War III. As long as she lives, the world won't, hap the war won't happen. Or at the very least, 5.7 billion people won't die. Why? Huh? Like Kursu? I mean, I know she's a genius, but are you telling me she's the hero who will save 5.7 billion people? I don't know. You don't know? Can you expect me to go along with this? Hey! I'm just following Dad's plan. And apparently, you're the one who came up with it in the first place. If there's a flaw in your plan, then we're all in trouble. It sounds like you didn't hear it from me. Is that right? He passed away 10 years ago. 15 years from now, that is. The year 2025. The same result is on the Alpha World line. So I don't know the whole story. What I do know is that my dad continued your work. After you died, he built this time machine all by himself to see your plan through. That's my super hacker. Huh? He must have hacked into CERN and stolen the research, then used it to construct his own time machine. On the Alpha World Line, CERN killed Dara before he could complete the time machine. But here, Dara was able to perfect his design. That's why he can go back to the future. At least, that seems the most likely explanation. Uncle Okarin. Like I said, Stan's Gate is unobserved. Nobody knows what future awaits us there. There's a chance that a dystopia arises from the ashes of World War III. There's a chance that Makase Kurosu dies just two days after you save her. There's a chance that you don't die in 25, 2025, but next week. But there's also a chance that when 2036 comes, there will be no dystopia, no world ravaged by war. There's a chance that everyone, including Makase Kurosu, will still be alive. There's a chance that a wonderful future awaits. At least it won't be the future I came from. And it won't be the future the other me came from. That much is certain. It's an unknown future, really for the best. I'd hate for the ending to ro the ending role to say, despite your best efforts, you made everything worse. It's completely unknown. It's completely unpredictable. Cursor can't be saved. Even I know that. Even if we change the past, Convergence will ensure her death, just as it did for Mayori. It's impossible. There's no way this plan can succeed. In the end, fate will win, as it always has. But if you're willing to try... If you're willing to come with me to July 28th and take my hand. I look down at Suzuwa's hand. Her skin is rough. 
her palm calloused. This cool, collected, unsmiling Suzua came from a wo from a ruined world, from the ashes of war that claimed over five billion lives. I can only imagine what she's been through. Kurasu. How have I how have I dreamt of saving her? I'd do anything, anything to change her fate. But how do I know this invitation won't lead me to another maze of despair? She doesn't understand anything, any of this. But this Makase person was very important to you, wasn't she? I think you should go for it. Five point seven billion people, man. I can't even imagine. No sweat the small stuff. You save the girl and you're set for life. It's the dream of every otaku. This music is dope. My area and Dara offer me encouragement. But it's not enough to overcome my doubt. The Makase cursor we know, Lab Mem number four, is already gone. Even if I save her on this world line. She won't remember any of the time she shared with us. So there's no point. I won't bend time to cut my convergence. Not again. I'm not God. I don't have the right. If I try, I'll just end up making things worse. Reason pleads with me to stop. And yet, I look at Suzua's outstretched hand. And then, with resignation, I grasp it firmly. Yeah, yeah. I'm in. Try though I might fight it, this choice was made for me on July 28th, the moment I laid eyes upon this time machine. Fate wants me to take your hand. Who am I to argue? I'm not at all confident that we can save Kurisu. How many times have I tried to resist fate only to fail? I don't want to see her die. But if there is a chance, however small, that she can be saved, I have to try. Even if I can't take back what we had, I want more than anything to save her. Let's go. Thank you, Uncle Okarin. Hop aboard! Can this thing even fit two people? It's my dad's masterpiece! <laughs> if it can fit one Daru, it can fit two people. Daru, your daughter really loves you. I don't get it, but stop calling me dad. I'd rather be big brother if you know what I mean. Be sure to come back, okay? I don't want you to disappear, okay? I'm not going to another world. It's just a short hop to the past. I pat Mayuri's arm reassuringly. Then I follow Suzuka to the time machine's hatch and slip inside. The interior is cylindrical and surprisingly tight. When I sit down on the ledge that rims the cylinder, it puts me face to face with Suzuka, like one of those giant teacup rides. <laughs> There are fewer, con fewer controls than I expected. The inside definitely looks more refined than what I saw on Suzu's time machine on the Alpha World line. But only one thing remains the same. The time display panel. A black screen with lead red lettering. I guess that's just Daru's taste. Give me your phone! When I hand it over, Suzu casually tosses out of the hatch. What? Hey! It's better not to bring it. It'll cause interference. Interference? Oh, I see. We're going to July 28th, so there'll be two of me. And if I bring it, two of my phone. I guess that could be a problem if I got a call or something. So time travelers really do need to be careful about what they bring to the past. Shut the hatch! I hear Mayuri and Daru cheering outside. Mayuri caught my phone, thankfully. I give them a final nod and then close the hatch. Silence engulfs us. 
Suzu is operating the time display panel. She sets her destination. July 28, 2010. 11.50 a.m. That should do it! That's cutting it awfully close. I remember that Dr. Nakabachi's presentation began at 12. This time machine can't physically move. Meaning? No matter what time we travel to, we always arrive at the exact same coordinates. In other words, on the roof of Radicon. I mean, it's a little more complicated than that, but there's no time to explain. Anyway, we could leave to the day before the presentation. If we attract too much att attention, that could close Radicon and cancel the presentation. That's why we gotta cut it close. I see. Uncle? This is your first time time traveling, right? Okay. First, stop calling me Uncle. And yes. I've made more time leaps than I want to remember, but I've never time traveled before. According to John Titor, the G forces are pretty strong. You feel like you're being stretched out. Yeah, I wrote that. The John Titor stuff? Right! Why would I left to 2000? I see. The past has changed. Changed back, I suppose, from my point of view. When I was on the Alpha World Line, I saw a Titer post on At Channel in real time. And on this World Line, those posts were made to an English BBS in the year 2000. And no, I still can't read BBS without thinking of Birth by Sleep. You don't sound surprised. I think it surprised me now. My brain is too busy trying to process all this new information. It feels like it's gonna blow. I'll go over the mission one more time. Once we arrive, there'll be no time for chit chat. The objective is to prevent Makase Kurisu's death. Ever since I returned to this world line, I've avoided all news of Kurisu's murder. I was afraid of setting that result in stone. So I still don't know who killed Kurisu. I don't know how or why she died. I don't know anything at all. If I'd known it had come to this, would I have looked things up? I ask myself that question. The answer's no. What about a tractor field convergence? That day's a turning point, remember? Meaning the probably, probability of Makase's Kurisu's death is roughly 50%. So convergence won't happen? It may happen, may not. No, it probably will. But I'm sure there's a loophole somewhere. That loophole is the doorway to Stan's gate. So in the end, it's a gamble. Oh, one more thing. Watch out for Dr. Nakabachi. What do you mean? Remember what I said about World War Three? It all started because of something called the Nakabachi paper. A paper Dr. Nakabachi wrote detailing his theory of time travel. That fraud's theory was just a rip-off of John Titus. Oh, shit. <laughs> God damn it, Suzuwa. What did... You why did you do that? Wait a minute. John Titus sitting right in front of me. So what Titus posted on the internet was true? I mixed in some lies, so not many people listened to me at the time. I never thought someone would reevaluate it in 10 years later. Looks like he built his theory over what I wrote. Apparently, it's almost perfect. Anyway, Dr. Nakabachi was there when Cursor was killed, right? So watch out for him. I'm sure he's important to the divergence of this world line. Dr. Nakabachi? Important? I thought it was just some con artist. Ready to go? Fasten your seatbelt! I look underneath my butt to find what looks like a car seatbelt. I wrap it around my waist and fix my body to the seat. Does it shake a lot? Shake? Nah, it doesn't shake. <laughs> you mean it does something else? 
Wait, is this safe? Tazua leans forward and pushes a bright yellow button on the bottom of the panel. There are no windows, so I can't tell if the time machine's moving. It's only three weeks, so it doesn't take more than two or three minutes. Tazua fastens her own seatbelt in size. When I first left in 1975, it was six long hours with nothing to do. I guess time travelers have their own problems. Since it's only a few minutes, we won't bother with the oxygen masks. Just be aware we'll have no oxygen dur for the duration. You mean I have to hold my breath? Right here. Izua points to the center of the cylinder. The space between me and her. I'll be an air pocket. Stick your head inside and you'll have enough oxygen for about 10 minutes. Hey. For argument's sake, what happens if we fail to save Kurisu? Uh, there's not much fuel left. We barely had enough to begin with. It's not even enough for a round trip to 2036. So if we fail to change the world line, then I'll be stuck in this time. But don't worry. As long as we're just traveling three weeks each way, we still have enough for two round trips. So what she's really saying is that we only have two chances. But then how do you plan to get back to 2036? I don't! Once we reach Stansgate, I won't have any reason to come back to, the t to this time in the first place, will I? Causality will be reconstructed. I should disappear from this time, since I'll probably be living peacefully in 2036. That all depends on you, Uncle Okarin. The tone is light, but her expression is serious. This is the first time in weeks that we've spoken. But I just now realized something about her. Zo is pretty reckless, isn't she? Suddenly, there's a zapping sound, and countless faint silver lights start floating around the cylinder. They look like moth dust, or powdered snow. The lights slowly change colors. Violet, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. Back to silver, violet, blue. The colors of the rainbow? I feel pressure on my entire body. Similar to the sensation you feel as you ascend in an elevator. In an elevator, you feel as if you've been pulled downwards. But instead, the time machine feels like it's pulling me, pulling at my back. The feeling of pressure quickly increases. It starts to feel like I'm falling horizontally. I never exp experienced anything like this. It's so uncomfortable, I want to scream. The strangest thing is that the time machine itself isn't shaking. In fact, it doesn't seem to be moving at all. There's no noise. No vibration. It's eerie. The pulling sensation grows even stronger. I can hear my bones creaking. I imagine my body flattened like a pancake. It's not a pleasant thought. <coughs> yeah, that sounds about right. It's getting worse. I look at Suzua. She has her eyes shut and her jaw clenched tight. I can no longer move. It feels like my back is glued to the wall. My vision begins to warp. And within my warping vision, the powder of light still shifts through the colors of the rainbow. It's strangely beautiful, like something out of a painting. And I still keep falling. Where is it taking me? Through a tunnel in space-time? All I know is that I'm falling. Suddenly everything goes dark. I try to scream, but even my voice falls away. It doesn't even reach my own ears. It's gravity. There's an intense gravitational distortion behind me. And I'm still falling towards it. My vision slowly recovers. The smell of ozone fills my nostrils. Suzua takes a deep breath and unfastens her seatbelt. We're here! I gulp for air. Did I really just travel through time? If so, then this is July 28th, the day Kurusu and I first met, the day I sent the first D-mail, the day it all began. Suzuwa takes out a digital watch. 
It's a fairly old-fashioned design. I bought it in 1975, but it's not even three years old yet. This is where an uninformed person would say in Japanese, please. Suzuwa sets the watch to the correct time and then hands it to me. The display reads 11.51. Nakabachi's presentation starts at 12. Let's do this! Do you keep an eye on Makase Kurusu and stop whoever tries to kill her? And you? I'll back you up! Also, Amawa took away your phone? The Yuan July 28th is here too. And there are currently two Okabe Rintaros in this world. Whatever you do, don't let your past self see you. It could cause a major time paradox. But Taito said that couldn't happen. That was a lie. Misinformation. Come to think of it, Alpha Suzuwa said that stuff she posted about the many words interpretation was fake too. Got it. Now let's go! We'll rendezvous with the time machine when it's over! Suzuwa finishes her rush explanation and motions me toward the hatch. I open the hatch and grab the rim. I squeeze my way out. Suzuwa crawls out after me and closes the hatch. You hide! I'll provide a distraction! Suzuwa runs up to the emergency door. And then to my astonishment, she draws a gun and fires at the doorknob. The door opens easily. It must have broken the lock. Any minute now, a crowd of people will run up these stairs to see what happened. My past self will be among them. I need to hide before they get here. That was a close one. I nearly bumped into myself on the 8th floor landing. Right after I ran downstairs to the 7th floor, I had footsteps running the other way behind me. Those footsteps were mine, no doubt. It was a near miss. To be safe, I descended to the 4th floor before stopping to take a breath. I took a look, take a look around, but there was nobody paying attention to me. I wonder what Suzuwa is doing. I'm worried, but I need to focus on my own mission. I must prevent Kurosu's death. In about 30 minutes from now, just after Nakabachi's presentation ends, someone will murder her. I know where it happens. In the 8th floor hallway towards the back of the building, where people rarely go. What I don't know is who stabbed her. Instead of running around and drawing attention to myself, I should just wait at the scene. Let's cool off here for about 5 minutes and then head over there. If I remember correctly, Kurosu tried to talk me, talk to me in the assembly hall, but I blew her off and came down here. After that, I tried calling Mayori, but her phone was off and I couldn't get through. So I went back to the assembly hall to find, to find her. What time was that? I searched my memories, trying to plot the actions I took on July 28th. It sounded simple when Suzuwa said it, but staying away from my past self is going to take more work than I thought. Frustration mounts. I shove Suzuwa's watch into my pocket to quash it. Just then... Excuse me. <laughs> that voice. I turn around. Chris. Kurosu! Um, do I know you? No. You came down from the roof just now, didn't you? She looks at me with those beautiful eyes, shining with intelligence and strength of will. I thought I'd never see her again. But now, now before my very eyes is the girl I love. Tears well up in my eyes. I want to embrace her right this instant. It takes everything I have to resist the urge, because God knows she'll just accuse me of being a perv again. But don't forget, this is our first meeting. This cursor doesn't know me. I heard a strange sound from the roof. Is that where the building shook just now? What's going on? It's not Dr. Nakabachi's doing, is it? Why did I have to run into Kurosu of all people? I can't answer. I'm afraid that if I speak, I'll be unable to contain my emotions. The memory of her last smile is burned into my mind. Imploring me to act. Are you listening? 
You're sweating like crazy. Kurosu looks at me with suspicion. What would happen if I were to grab Kurosu and run? Would divergence change? Would her murder be averted? I recall all the times Mayuri died. I recall all the times I time leaped to save her. Everything I tried ended in vain. I was unable to save her even once. No matter what I did, the world itself killed her. Won't it be the same with Kurosu? Should I even try? I reached toward Kurosu, my hand shaking. <laughs> hey! She steps back in surprise and fear, clutching a min Minalia? I don't know what a Minal min min Minalia? Minalia? I don't know what one of those is. Clutching a Minalia envelope to her chest. This is our first meeting. I know that. But to me, she's still the girl I love. If I'd been thinking straight a second ago, I would have realized that my plan to grab her and flee wasn't going to work. Kurosu would never follow some strange man she only just met. Running isn't an option. All I can do is wait at the scene of the crime. Fighting against the urge to stay, I force myself to turn and leave. Please answer my question! But Kurosu pursues me. Why is she so desperate to know who I am? Do I look... I do look suspicious, I'll admit that. But if she thinks I'm dangerous, why would she come alone? I turn around and reluctantly meet Kurosu's stare. Answer me. <laughs> Can I... Oh my God. Can I really save you? The words catch in my throat. Can I save her? I don't know. All I know is that Convergence is merciless and cruel. And that I'm powerless to stop it. Can you... what? <laughs> I shake my head and then bolt for the stairs before Kurosu can react. Uh, uh, Wait! Stop! When I make it back to the 8th floor, the, pl the presentation has already started. I peek through the door at the assembly hall. <laughs> who the hell am I?! Someone who knows you're a fraud, that's who! Someone in the audience is shouting at Dr. Nakabachi. And that someone is me. Now I remember. I confronted Dr. Nakabachi in the middle of his presentation. I called him a fraud for ripping off John Titus' posts. From this angle, I look like a real asshole. Someone throw that man out! Staff members approach. Damn, this is embarrassing. But there's nothing I can do here. I need to leave before Kurisu appears. I turn around and head deeper into the dim passage. I feel like I'm leading her to her death. An image flashes through my mind. She was lying air, there at the, end of the pa at the end of this passage in a puddle of her own blood. 20 minutes from now. That's exactly what will happen. Can I prevent it? I must. Whatever it takes. There's a pile of junk. Toolboxes, cardboard and the like. Halfway down the, halfway down the passage. A perfect hiding spot. I crouch behind them. Now all I have to do is wait for Kurosu to show. But what will I do when she does? Only now do I realize that I'm completely unarmed. I really didn't think this through. Kurosu was lying in a pool of blood. That means her killer had a weapon. Since I didn't hear a gunshot, it must have been a knife or something similar. How am I going to defend her? And myself? Is there anything around here that might work as a weapon? I still have about 20 minutes. For one more move and someone might catch me. I shouldn't leave this spot. Maybe I'm being overly cautious, but this is my only chance to prevent Kurosu's death. I don't want to jeopardize that. I don't know what I'd do if I'd ran into Kurosu again. It's a miracle that I managed to tear myself away last time. 
The longer I wait in the darkness, the harder it becomes. The anticipation's killing me. So far, not a single soul has passed down this hallway. I can faintly hear Nak Nakabachi's voice through the mic from far away, but that's it. The silence does not increase my tension. To make matters worse, it's hot and humid. I guess the air conditioner's not on back here. My entire body strengths in sweat, and I haven't even been hiding for a minute. Sweat drips from my brow to the floor. I rub it out with my shoe. I have to keep waiting. There's no other choice. I stay there, crouched in the darkness for what seems like an eternity. In the distance, I hear the sound of sparse applause. I glance at Suzuwa's watch. It's 12.26. Guess the presentation's over. I peek out from behind the boxes, and just then... I hear footsteps approaching. I quickly duck back behind cover. My heart is pounding. Someone's coming this way. Who? Is it Kurosu's murderer? I clench my teeth and try to drive away that tension. I can only pray that I won't be found. Finally, the footsteps pass right by my hiding spot. Moving only my eyes, I sneak a glance at the person. Kurosu? There's no one with her. I didn't expect Kurosu to be the first to appear. What is she doing back here? This area is for employees only. Now that I think about it, Kurosu's murder made no sense. Why was she killed in a place where she would normally never come? Careful to keep quiet, I watch Kurosu from the shadows. About five meters down the hall, she stops walking and leans against the wall. She's holding the manila envelope I saw her, what I saw her with earlier. She peeks inside and smiles softly. Why is she smiling? Kurosu rarely smiles like that. I mean, it's more like her to glare at people. That envelope. I search my memories again. When Kurosu approached me during Nakabachi's presentation, I'm pretty sure she was holding that envelope. But did she have it when I discovered her body? I don't remember seeing it. What could be inside to make Kurosu smile like that? I can't begin to imagine. Kurosu hasn't moved a muscle. She's just standing there, head hung. Her face hidden behind her long hair. I can't read her expression. Is she waiting for someone? Who? Who will she meet in a place like this? That's when I hear another set of footsteps approaching. I can't see who it is from where I'm hiding. But given the timing, it has to be the person that killed Kurosu. And as proof, Kurosu raises her head. And upon recognizing the newcomer... Lifts her back off the wall. Her expression softens slightly. The footsteps come even closer. Who is it? I wanted to talk. Kurosu suddenly starts speaking. The footsteps right pass right by my hiding spot. I'm so tense I can't move a muscle. The newcomer finally appears in my narrow field of vision. And it's... Dr. Nakabachi? I slap a hand over my mouth to keep from shouting in astonishment. Kurosu and Dr. Nakabachi know each other? Oh, one more thing! Watch out for Dr. Nakabachi! Something else occurs to me. Why would Kurosu, an accomplished scientist, attend the presentation of a man like Dr. Nakabachi? This is her dad, isn't it? It's like, that's the only conclusion I can draw. He's just a two-bit inventor. Only 15 people came to hear him speak, and that's including trolls like me. There wasn't even any press coverage. Besides, Kurosu hates time travel science. That much was obvious from her Electra ATF. In that case, it's obvious why she's here. She didn't come to see his presentation. She came to see him. But why? What could be the connection? Wait. 
It can't be. Are you listening, Papa? Papa. He's her father. Her estranged father, who she told me she hadn't seen in seven years. Kurosu did say that her father was a physicist. And uh, uh, Nakabachi certainly is a physicist. Though the scientific community at large has rejected his research. Uh, wait. Does this mean Nakabachi killed his own daughter? Or was it someone else? Someone who's yet to appear? There's no way to know. If I could be sure that D Nakabachi was the killer, then I would intervene right now. But I'm not. I better keep watching, see what happens. What is that? I heard you were giving a presentation on time travel. So I thought about it too. Could it be possible to make a time machine? Kurosu wrote a paper on time travel? But when she spoke at ATF, she rejected the very idea of time travel. Although, come to think of it, she was awfully interested in the phone wave. Damn, I forgot how much of a tsundere she was. I like your opinion, Papa. We can polish it together, then submit it to the scientific community. I don't know if they'll listen, but just in case, I do have acquaintances at a science magazine. Nakabachi takes out the document and starts reading it with a disgusted frown. So that's what it was. She didn't have anything dangerous in that envelope, like a drugs or a gun. It was just some document. But that raises a new question. Could that be the Nakabachi paper? According to Suzuka, that document sparked time travel arms arms race that ultimately led to World War III and the death of 5.7 billion people. It started with an arms race between EU and Russia. Then America got involved and all things really went to hell. Is that why Kurosu's safety is so important on changing divergence? I get it now. Nothing's coincidence. Everything's inevitable. Nakabachi flips restlessly through the, doc through the document. He's not even trying to hide his irritation. Did I ask you to write this? Well, no, but... You invited me to come, remember? It was the first time we'd talked in seven years. That's what got me thinking. And I worked on the thesis. I started to realize it might actually be possible to build a time machine. If the thesis is published, you could have your revenge on the scientific community for shunning you. I wasn't shunned! Nakabachi suddenly shrieks at Kurosu, causing him to sink back in fear. Those incompetent bastards were just jealous of my superiority. I was the one who gave up on them. Please don't yell. Nakabachi gives his daughter a disdainful snort and goes back to flipping through the paper. You read really fast, Papa. Just like I remember. Nakabachi even ignores Kurosu's words of endearment. Not bad. You think so? You can submit it jointly if you like. I don't mind. No, don't do anything. I'll take care of it. What do you mean? What do I mean? I mean, don't think you're special just because you got your plebeian thesis published in some magazine. What? Is that how you look at your father? I'm sorry. An awkward silence follows. I feel no warmth between these two. The only thing I feel is distance. Kurosu in particular seems desperate to avoid upsetting her father. Um, we haven't seen each other in a while. There's a lot I want to talk about. You are living in Aomori now, right? Kurosu is trying to maintain a cheerful tone, but I see that her expression is stiff. I remember how she said she had trouble dealing with her father.
I think my father hates me. She looked so lonely when she spoke those words. Leave. Huh? Go back to America. Never show your face to me again. But... You want my opinion? We'll submit it jointly? Don't you You don't mean any of that. I know how you think. He sounds like a child with an inferiority complex. Is this pity? How dare you! You're supposed to be my daughter! I... I don't understand. Please come. I am calm! Don't tell me what to do! This is bad. It's almost time for Kurosu's murder. Was it really Nakabachi, her own father, who killed her? I'll tell you why I called you here today. I wanted to show you my research. Research beyond even what you can imagine. I wanted to prove once and for all that you are nothing compared to me. But that brat in the lab coat ruined everything. I know you were laughing at me too, don't you deny it. How dare you treat your father this way! I wasn't... You want my opinion on this thesis? Fine, I'll give it to you. Nakabachi rolls, up, rolls right over Kurosu's objections. It's like he doesn't even hear her voice. I'm going to publish it myself. End of discussion. You're stealing it, Papa? What did you say? You're stealing my work? I didn't think even you would do something like... Nakabaji <sighs> suddenly whirls and strikes Kurosu across the face. What do I do? I know this is- I know I should do something, but what? Who do you think you're talking to? Nakabachi throws the paper aside and seizes his daughter by the throat. Kurosu gasps for air. Her face twists in pain and his grip tightens. You can't possibly understand how I feel! Why did you have to be so talented? I detest you! I hate your very existence! Nobody's allowed to be better than me! Understand? Nobody! Especially not my own daughter! That's why I sent you away. I couldn't bear the shame of being your father. It's all your fault. It's all your fault! This is completely absurd. He's blaming her for his own failures. I've seen enough. He's the killer for sure. I burst from my hiding spot. Stop! <laughs> huh? I ram into him with my shoulder as hard as I can, knocking him away from Kurosu. Kurosu gasps for breath. <laughs> Who the hell are you? I won't let you kill Kurosu! I'm going to save Kurosu. I'm going to save her and change the future. Even a weakling like me can pin down an old la man like Nakabachi. Then I can get Suzuki to call the police and... The memory of Kurosu's body flashes through my mind. No, it won't turn out like that. Setting himself with one hand against the wall, Nakabachi gets to his feet and looks straight at me. The instant our eyes meet, his face twists in rage. You! You're the brat who ruined my presentation! His presentation? Right, of course. I called him out on his lies in the middle of his presentation. Nakabachi is mistaking me for my past self. Understandable, since we look exactly the same. How dare you show your face before me! WHY DOES EVERYONE GET IN MY WAY?! I know. You and Kurosu planned this, didn't you? DIDN'T YOU?! He's delusional. You brats won't get away with this. Akabachi glares at me with bloodshot eyes, then takes something out of his pocket. 
At first, I can't tell what it is. But then I see the glint in the dim light. A knife. The blade is about 20 centimeters long. I can't help but shiver at its cold shine. Why is he even carrying something like that? Is he completely insane? Wait. Is that the weapon that killed Kurosu? I won't let that happen. Damn. Why is my brain so fixated on that scene? You'll pay for mocking me! Nakabachi charges like an enraged bull with no sign of hesitation whatsoever. He raises the knife high. <laughs> I instinctively dodge back. The knife misses me by a hair. He gathers himself for another strike. The side of his face twisted in madness and filled rage fills me with terror. I want to scream. He's going to kill me! No. Don't be afraid. I can't die here. The past is already decided. Wait. If the past is already decided, that doesn't mean I can't save Kurisu. I shake up the thought. Just think about saving her. Apologize! <laughs> Swallowing my fear, I force myself to stop running away. Instead, I lunge forward. I knock Nakabachi's hand aside. The knife falls from his grip and clatters to the floor. I leap on it and pick it up. That was easier than I suspected. Stop it, Papa! Don't tell me what to do! I look up in surprise. Nakabachi's taking a screwdriver from a toolbox left in the passage. Chris is walking toward him, pleading him to stop. She's completely defenseless. No, Kurosu! Stay away from him! You're the one in danger, not me! Just when I thought I disarmed him, he finds something else. Even a screwdriver can kill with enough force behind it. Kurosu! Run, Kurosu! Kurosu glances at me, but she doesn't move. Why won't she run away? Papa! This is crazy, Papa! Papa! Please stop! What do you know? What do you know?! Nakabachi's completely lost his mind. Nothing she can say will reach him. If only you'd never been born! Nakabachi turns to Kurosu, brandishing his screwdriver. But Kurosu still doesn't run away. Blood spurts from the arm Kurosu used to guard her face. She's going to die. I have to do something! I grip the knife firmly in my hands. Kurosu won't die if I kill Nakabachi first. That image again. Stop getting in my way! I won't be tied to the past! I need to do this. To change the future. To save Kurosu! Nakabachi! As Nakabachi raises his arm for another blow, I thrust my arm at his unprotected back. Through the knife, I feel my, ha my hand feels resistance. The sensation of tearing through flesh, scraping bone. It's surprisingly tough. But at the same time, I feel the flesh pulsating. It shifts in time with my victim's breath. God damn it, Kurosu, why? I... Stabbed. I stabbed. None. Why? I can't believe my eyes. What happened? I tried to stab Nakabachi. The blade should have pierced his back. And yet... At the last minute, Kurosu forced herself between us as if... As if to protect Nakabachi. None. Why? Strength drains from Kurosu's body. She slumps against me, her head on my shoulder. <laughs> A fitting end for you fools. <laughs> Laughing maniacally, Nak Nakabachi picks up the dropped thesis and runs to the elevator at the far end of the hall. 
I can't chase him. I know what's going to happen if I don't stop him, but I can't take a single step. Is this a joke? Is this the punchline? I wanted to know who killed Kurisu. And now... I'm... Sorry. Kurisu speaks. Her voice is barely a whisper. I feel something wet on my hands. Wet. And warm. Blood. Kurisu's blood. Gushing from her wound. It's warm, but not hot. And yet, it feels like it's burning my hands. I try to pull the knife out. That's the worst thing you could honestly do. <laughs> if I can stop the bleeding, maybe she'll be okay. But my hands won't move. It's like they've turned to stone. My arms. My fingers. No matter how hard I try, they won't move an inch. Kurisu's breathing quickly grows laboured. She's suffocating. Suffering even. I didn't mean for this to happen. This isn't what I wanted. Why won't my hands move? I want to pull out the knife. I want to ease her pain. Why won't my body obey me? It's as if someone else is in control. Kurisu's body convulses against mine. The pain must be unbearable. Is there nothing I can do to help her? I want to cry. Toast. Why? The only thing I can do is ask. Because he's still my father. I just wanted him to accept me. I studied so hard. Hoping he would praise me. Now, I finally understand. Papa, I didn't want to accept me. I'm such an idiot. Why did I not save him? I wonder. I'm sorry. For getting you involved. It hurts. Am I going to die? I don't want to die. I don't want it to end like this. Her voice is fading fast. Don't die. Please don't die on me. For my prayers are in vain. Help. Me. Help. Her body suddenly grows heavy. I can no longer hear the sound of her breathing. And yet, the blood from her wound is still warm. I killed her. I killed her. The one who killed Kurisu was me. As I scream, another me looks down from above. As he hears the sound of my despair, the last piece of the puzzle clicks into place. The scream I heard that day, it was my own. Uncle Okarin! 
Someone pulls at my arm. Come on! Get up! I feel hands slip under my shoulders and drag me away. The knife is m in my hand is pulled free from Kurisu's chest. A fresh torrent of blood follows it. Still warm. Please open your eyes, Kurisu. Wake up. Pull yourself together! We need to get out of here before they find us! I'm sorry. I didn't mean to kill you. I tried to save you, but I did. No. Why is this happening? Someone puts their arm over their sh someone puts my arm over their shoulder and hauls me to my feet, then drags me away step by step. I don't have the strength to resist. Guilt and regret are the only things inside of me. I killed Kurisu. Twice. <laughs> yep. yeah. Let's get out of here. I don't give up yet, Uncle! Everything's gonna be fine! I promise! Now hold on tight! I feel someone push me hard from behind. Next, they take the knife away. My fingers are like... My fingers are like solid rock. They have to be pried open one by one. I failed to save Kurisu. Worse. Convergence made me kill her. The past has already been decided. It was impossible to change it from the start. 